Hi everyone. Okay, so in this video, we're going to describe. Um, so we already saw that Bob has generated his public and private key, and Alice has taken the message, her secret message she wants to send m, which is some integer, and um, computed m to the power um, e um, to get. Uh, her cipher text, which we call C, and this is a message she's going to send across this, um, like by mail or email or whatever, across this unsecure line. Okay. And we want to be sure that if Eve gets it, um, you know, she won't be able to tell what M is, given C, and also Eve will have access to the public key as well. So you have to make sure, um, you know, Eve can't discover what M is. So in this video, we're going to s explain how Bob can receive C and then uh, get M back using it, it, the private key. Okay, let's see, the private key is here. Um, so here's the public key, and here's the private key. And Alice has sent us C, and we have to compute M. What does Bob do? The so Bob receives C, an integer, or really it's an integer mod n, and Bob's pub private key is phi of n d, and he also knows. Um, and an E as well, in it, if he needs it, you know. Um, and all he does is he computes C to the D. C to the D equals something mod N. It turns out you get um, M back. Okay. Um, as long as We chose M um, as long as our message was between one and n. Okay, um, and we can like n is typically you know very very large, so. Um, so if M is larger than N, we can just break it up into blocks and send like a bunch of messages, each message in this range. Okay. So anyways, um, what we want to prove is just that the thing that Bob computes is really, um, is really M. Okay, so suppose, um, m to the e is congruent to c mod n then um, c to the d is congruent to m mod n and let's prove this okay so we just compute um, c to the d so let's just um, m to the e to the d Okay, that's um, m to the 1 plus k times 5n, where this is just because ed is congruent to 1 mod 5n. Okay, but um, that's m times m to the 5n to the k. And that's congruent to m. m to the phi of n is congruent to 1, except for unless, um, you know, the GCD of m and n is not equal to 1. Okay. And, um, Okay, it means if we chose a message that happened to share a common factor with n, then this wouldn't work. But um, 
we just have to think about it and just assure ourselves that um, it's very unlikely that M would have that the GCD of M and N would be not equal to one because if if um so so this proposition only works if GCD of M and N is one. But um if the G like if M is less than or equal to N and it has G C D uh not equal to one then M is e actually e either equal to P or Q. Okay. And um you know, if we choose, if we pretend like we're in uh, statistics or some or probability, not even statistics, but if we pretend, if we pretend we're in probability, the the probability that we choose one of those two numbers, well, p and q is just two out of n, right? And um, n is a number with like a thousand di digits, so our probability is like two over that is almost zero. Okay, so it's very unlikely that we choose our message. Oh, sorry, no, no, I'm completely wrong, but it's still very small. Um, you know, because uh, um, M could be a multiple of either P or Q, but um, it's still, like, extremely, extremely small that uh, M would have a common factor with N, that M would be divisible by P or Q. Okay, so that proves this proposition. In other words, Bob just um, computes c to the dth power, d is his private key, and he gets back m, okay. assuming that um, m is less than or equal to n, he, he's okay. okay. So I guess our other assumption should be that if gz of m and n is 1 and is less than or equal to m is less than or equal to n. Okay. And now Bob has received his is the, the message that Alice wanted to send, and everyone is happy. Um, and in the last video, we'll just talk briefly about like um, what Eve sees and what she would have to do. Um, to, to figure out the message. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.